Hey, and welcome back. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I'm in a funk. I'm in like, I don't know what else to call it, except a funk. For probably the past month, I don't know if it's coming back home and the excitement of filming a TV show is over, or if it's just life and this never ending COVID and just everything else. I'm, I'm feeling, like I could be doing a lot better in life. It's time for me to level up. It's time for me to be the person that I want to be. And I am obsessed with the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. I think of any book when it comes to motivation, changing habits, being the best you you could possibly be, that's the book for me. And it's all about small, tiny changes. Here's what we're gonna do. You and I are doing a five week new habit challenge. You're doing this with me, whether you want to or not. Come on, come on, do it with me. I'm making my entire family do it with me. Alicia, my assistant, is doing this with me. This is gonna be really, really fun. Okay, so James Clear says, success is the product of daily habits, not once in a lifetime transformations. And so I want to change some things about myself and I'm going to do it using this five week new habit challenge tracker. We're starting today. So this week, we're gonna pick a small, tiny, atomic, micro habit that we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it every day for seven days. Then the next week, we're gonna add another small, tiny little baby habit while still doing the previous week's habit. So here's my habits. Because I've been a sloth, and I've just basically, I'm beating myself up about all these things and not doing these things, so it's time to take action. It's time to stop feeling sorry for myself and making excuses and do it. But in like tiny little baby steps, cause like realism, you know what I mean? They have to be realistic. So this is the hardest one. I'm starting with it. Wake up every day at 8 a.m. No matter what. I, I am embarrassed to admit there are days I sleep till noon. I don't have a boss. I don't have anyone to be accountable to. And I'm certainly not setting a good example for my children. Every day, 8 a.m. So I'm gonna check it off every day, simple. Next week, I'm gonna pair a protein with every snack. I have a tendency when, especially I'm feeling sad, I'm in a funk, I am feeling sad, I grab candy or carbs, something sugary. I can still do that, but I have to pair a protein. Whether it's a slice of turkey, or cottage cheese, or Greek yogurt, or maybe some nuts, I don't know. But protein satisfies me, it keeps me feeling fuller longer and it's just better for me, right? So I'm gonna pair a protein. I can still eat whatever I want. I just have to have a protein with everything I'm putting in my mouth. Week three is 15 minutes of exercise. At first I put a half an hour, but that would be setting myself up for failure. Baby steps. So I can do 15 minutes, whether it's some push-ups, crunches, going for a light, I don't wanna say run, I wanna say jog. I can do 15 minutes. And week four is drink eight glasses of water. I am constantly dehydrated. I do not drink enough water. I personally think water tastes disgusting. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but I really do, I'm like a toddler. So I'm gonna be drinking flavored water, but eight glasses. So I have a big old water bottle that I'm gonna carry around with me and make sure that I drink two of them every day. And then, Week five, I'm gonna read before bed, which means shut my electronics off an hour before bed and actually read to get tired because I gotta wake up at 8 a.m., which is like ridiculous. Is the sun even up at 8 a.m.? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, sometimes I see 8 a.m., but it ain't often. But anyways, these are my five weeks, and I want you to think about what yours could be. I don't know what type of area in your life that you want to improve on, but think of tiny things that you could do, like just going outside. Just go, it doesn't even have to be for a length of time. Go outside. Maybe it's get dressed every day. If that's something you're struggling with, make your bed, do the dishes. If you don't do your dishes every single day, that's got to go on your list. And every week you just do one thing and then the second week you add another and you add another. I'm going to put lots more examples in the description of things that you can add to your five week challenge. Let's do this together. Let's hold each other accountable. You can do this. We can do this together. We can support each other and make real 
changes in our lives. You can find this printable. It's free in my printable shop. I'm going to put a link in the comments and in the description below so you can get a copy of this. I'm also going to put a link to the Facebook group and my Facebook page so that we can chat together, hold each other accountable, and really do this. And every Thursday on my Facebook page, I'm gonna be posting a new post in my Facebook group to remind you that we're adding a new habit. I'm gonna see you September 9th. That's when I'm gonna do my follow-up video so I can share like, did I really do this? Did I stick with it? Yeah, you're gonna make me stick with it. So I stuck with it. And we're gonna see how our five week challenge went together. So in the comments, if you could put some things that you're going to do on your habit tracker, I'm having my whole family do this. We're posting them on the fridge. Maybe this is something you can do as a family too. Teach your husband, teach your children how to create new habits for success. And if you're looking for some even extra motivation, I definitely recommend the audiobook or the book Atomic Habits by James Clear life-changing. You ready? Let's do this, you guys. So thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I don't know why I'm feeling just, I'm, I'm really hyped about this challenge. I think one of the biggest reasons why I fail is accountability. I don't have somebody to hold me accountable. So I'm excited that you are going to hold me accountable and I'm going to hold you accountable and we can do this together. But I also wanted to share a ridiculous story with you. <laughs> So this past weekend, I, for the first time in my entire life, maybe I was stung before, but I'm not sure, I was stung by wasps, like a lot of wasps, like an army of wasps. They were trying to kill me. I had a moment where I thought it was a killer bee situation. It was not. It was because I'm growing grapevine to try to cover this like nasty part of my fence that has a ravine on the other side. And I was like training the vines to go down and I felt searing agony as I was looking down and covered like some sort of candy man horror story with bees, which were they're not bees, they were yellow jacket wasps and they were stinging me and it hurt so bad and I was dying and I was screaming and Joe was on the phone and he came running and my kids came running and I'm just like, run Milo! And he's he thought there was a monster, or some sort of serial killer and he just booked it in the house and slammed the door. Um, wow, getting stung by wasps hurts. Getting stung by a bajillion wasps really hurts. I completely swelled up. Um, I thought I was going into anaphylactic shock because I am a hypochondriac and I'm pretty sure I'm dying 24 seven. And so I was like, I can't breathe. Can I breathe? Am I breathing? Am I, is this, is my throat swelling up? And Joe's like, you're talking, you're probably okay. <laughs> and I was, I was totally fine. But agony, absolute, so much pain. It hurts so bad. So I told Joe he had to go get wasp spray, right? I could see the hole that the wasps, I didn't even know. The wasps, yellow jackets make a nest in the ground. They can dig like little, I don't know, mole men or something. So he, his bright idea was to cover it with a bucket of dirt. They dig in dirt. They make their nest in dirt. They can dig, Joe. I don't know how a bucket of dirt is going to help. He was convinced it was. I was like, that seems not plausible but anyways what happened was then he just had dozens of swarms of angry wasps digging out and attacking him as well so then he does what any normal man would do he tries to kill them with fire he has a propane blow torch for some reason because this is how he gets rid of weeds also a spray would work joe weed killer vinegar pulling them. Now, Joe kills everything with fire. So he's killing the wasps with fire. He's just, he's just going to town, which is melting my plastic chair, melting the rod, which holds my bug zapper and completely obliterating my grapevine that I was trying to like, that's the reason I got stung in the first place. I was trying to train my grapevine, which is now ash, burn the grass, burned a couple of wasps, mostly made them incredibly angry. I ended up going and getting wasp spray because the next day, I swear they multiplied. They probably called every friend because now there's hundreds of them because Joe tried to burn them with fire. And um, I sprayed them with the wasp spray and they're gone. So the moral of this story is, I don't know what the moral of this story is, but I'm pretty sure it's don't use a blowtorch to get a wasp's nest. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.